congratulations on being on time. And we will reward you uh, by starting. Um, my name is Asaf Baltov. I'm presenting work that I've uh, conceived, planned, and executed uh, with my colleague Dumisani, uh, who uh, recently uh, left the Wikimedia Foundation, so he's not here. Uh, but uh, he's uh, an African Wikimedian, many of you uh, may have met or know. Um, and this is called the Africa Growth Pilot Phase 2. Last year in Singapore, uh, I presented uh, the plans for Phase 1, which was then just about to take place. So I'm going to present some results from that Phase 1 and then uh, share the plans for Phase 2, which is now uh, about to begin. Uh, but first, I'll walk you through uh, what the, the hypotheses were, what the pilot is, why we're doing it. And so if you have uh, uh, attended my Singapore uh, talk, the first few minutes will be somewhat of something of a repetition. So what is this uh, pilot? It's a pilot. It's an experiment. Uh, we're not sure it's going to work. We're very hopeful. And it... Its goal is to try a new approach to recruiting editors, a new way to increasing the editor base, specifically in sub-Saharan Africa, and to essentially reform our uh, outreach practice in, Af in sub-Saharan Africa uh, to make it more efficient, meaning uh, to get more return on our investment, to get more active editors per dollar spent or per hour spent. Um, and we're testing this hypothesis. We have been testing this hypothesis for... Uh, why is this uh, making such noise? This feedback? Is there something I can... No. Okay. Oh, it's the air conditioning? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so we're testing this, uh, this hypothesis and ideally, if it works, if we have... All right. If it works, if, if it uh, um, does show an increase in efficiency in recruiting editors, we expect and hope it will be adopted by other communities. There's nothing in it that is um, limiting or limited to sub-Saharan Africa, but we have designed it with the particular challenges there in mind. And we welcome your feedback on this experiment. So uh, how did it come about? Uh, let me walk you through a few facts we know. We know that Africa is, uh, has the youngest population in the world. Uh, it is growing. People are coming online in the millions in Africa. And uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, economics analyses and tech companies are talking about the next billion users uh, to come online. And many, <coughs> excuse me, many, many of them will be coming from Africa. Despite that, the share of Africans among readers of Wikipedia and even more among contributors to Wikipedia is disproportionately small relative to their share of the global population and even relative to their share in the connected internet using population. In other words, sub-Saharan Africans tend to edit less than people elsewhere than the world average. Um, and uh, there may be all kinds of hypotheses about why that is, and we are not very well positioned to do that research and to come up with <clears throat> answers why, but we have been um, acting on input that we have gathered from our own communities, our own existing volunteer communities in Africa, and tried to act on what they told us and what we observed from the existing outreach efforts that we had in Africa. So. The, the specificity of these numbers, oh, sorry, I, have, I haven't changed the slide. The specificity of these numbers doesn't matter uh, terribly much, but um, just, just to give you a sense, uh, Africans are only 1% of the global total of active editors, uh, even though they are about 7% of the internet-connected world population, right? Um, and in total, we have around, I mean, it does fluctuate a little, but we have around 2,000 active editors 
in sub-Saharan Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa, not including North Africa. 2,000, that's all. Yes, 2,000 active editors. I remind you that active editors are defined as people who have made at least five edits a month, right? Like about one a week. That's an active editor. So that kind of profile, people who have made at least five edits in the last month, about 2,000, okay? In all of sub-Saharan Africa together. That's status quo. That's what we have now. <clears throat> We also know that a lot of the existing uh, efforts, programmatic outreach done in Sub-Saharan Africa is not as effective as it should be and not as effective as we'd like it to be because the volunteers carrying out this outreach are not sufficiently familiar with what would make it more effective outreach. And different volunteers have different gaps, but broadly they are divided into insufficient familiarity with the platform, with the features of MediaWiki, content translation, the visual editor, how to technically add citations, that sort of thing. Gaps in understanding the core policies, neutral point of view, notability, verifiability, copyright and free licenses. These are the fundamental content policies on the wikis, especially Wikipedia has a fairly uh, demanding um, level of compliance required, right? It's a lot easier to proofread a page on Wikisource than it is to compose a well-cited article on, on a mature Wikipedia. Um, and uh, uh, sometimes it's a gap of understanding the culture, the culture of peer collaboration, the culture of pseudonymous people being able to revert your work and you not being able to just get on a phone and you know talk to them face to face, right? That flies in the face of cultural expectations of uh, many people in Africa. So some people have a gap with that, right? With, with this, this very disembodied, somewhat alienating nature of online peer collaboration. This together leads to frustrated organizers and frustrated learners because they're getting uh, trained by people who themselves have a gap who are not the best ambassadors or, or uh, the most competent uh, people to deliver this training. And so the learners aren't getting all the support that they could wish for and uh, uh, expectedly uh, low retention rates. Right? Many of the people who are entering outreach activities, workshops, editathons, uh, do, not, do not remain active editors, don't become active editors, do not continue to edit. Now we have heard, like I said, uh, a collection of anecdotes is the best we have. We have not done rigorous quantitative research on this to determine the, uh, the need, but we have heard repeatedly, uh, including, for example, at Let's Connect um, calls, that uh, folks say, yes, you, you teaching us uh, this tool or that campaign is great, but we actually need more basic training. We, we're, we need better materials, tutorials on some of the basics like copyright or like notability, which keeps biting our newbies, right? They keep running up against uh, uh, deleted articles, insufficient uh, proof of notability, and the communities, some communities, I am generalizing obviously, but we have repeatedly heard from sub-Saharan African communities that they struggle with communicating the core policies to their learners, to their peers in their communities. Um, and this is, in that sense, this is a little special to Sub-Saharan Africa. In most other parts of the world, uh, the core policies is something that the, commu the local community itself um, socializes, relays from generation to generation, from group to group. Uh, I have not been asked elsewhere in the world uh, for help explaining copyright or notability, right? Usually the local community produces outreach material uh, on its own, and in Africa, for whatever reason, this was a consistent ask. We want good training materials, we need them, and they're not being produced uh, locally. Now this, parenthetically, is our fault, everybody's, like the foundation, English Wikipedia's fault, it is kind of amazing that in 2024, we don't have high quality, comprehensive, up-to-date video tutorials on the core policies. 
Isn't that amazing? For a top 10 website, for a website that tries so hard to attract newbies, etc. And we know everything we know about, you know, where the world is headed and the, the video generation and young people today and all of that. And yet, uh, while there are, you know, any number of presentations and recorded presentations and videos out there on Commons or, you know, it's on Meta, uh, we don't have like a standard thing that is high quality vetted that the wiki itself offers you. You know, Wikipedia doesn't have a nice, sorry? Fantastic. Uh, English Wikipedia, English Wikipedia does not have a nice friendly green button that says, watch a video tutorial, right? To me, that's amazing. But anyway, so, so we, we have heard this, and I'm, I, I made the point that the, the, the ask was specific to Sub-Saharan Africa, but actually the need is not. The need is universal. Um, so anyway, this led us to set ourselves a goal, a very ambitious goal. Pop quiz. How many active editors do we have in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa? 2,000. Okay, these 2,000 are what we have acquired minus what we have lost in 20 odd years of work in Africa, right? And by definition, these are the easier 2,000 people to recruit because it's a fact they're here. We want to recruit 3,000 more active editors in Sub-Saharan Africa by 2030, which may seem like a long way away, but it really isn't. It's in about five years, right? In about five years, we want to more than double the editor base in Sub-Saharan Africa. That is the goal that uh, we set for ourselves or that was set for us by uh, Mariana, our CEO. And uh, Dumisani and I were tasked with figuring out how do we do that? How, how do we produce 3,000 more active editors who will keep on editing in Sub-Saharan Africa, given that all our efforts so far have given us about 2,000. We did a lot of thinking about this and um, came up with a few observations. So first, there was the, the issue of the <clears throat> that I mentioned of the training materials. There, the, the, the lack of high-quality, up-to-date audiovisual training materials of the core policies, not of some advanced tools, is especially limiting in sub-Saharan Africa. Again, we could go into hypotheses about why that is and cultural differences and visual expectations and orality and all that. Yes, okay, maybe, but the need is there and the lack of these resources is especially uh, damaging or, or uh, limiting in Sub-Saharan Africa. We also noticed that people who are involved, people who are editing in Sub-Saharan African communities tend to plateau early in their acquisition of platform knowledge. So they went to some training, they learned the mechanics of editing, this is the edit button, this is the talk page, this is how you upload an image, this is how you make a link. And uh, very soon afterwards, a lot of them, again, these are generalizations, a lot of them um, stop gaining new skills. They keep on doing what they were taught at a very basic level, and they don't get an improved sense of policy. And that results, again, in a lot of frustration and a generally low to average edit quality. Um, it sometimes feels as though many volunteers, and this breaks my heart, are writing an article or making a change, and then they're like, well, I hope the powers that be, the Wikipedia managers, receive my offering. You know, but because who knows, you know, maybe they will and maybe they won't. Maybe it'll be reverted by powers unknown, a kind of feeling of disempoweredness that I think is, is sad, uh, is, is uh, not the way it should be, right? We should be contributing in joy and confidence. We should have reasonable confidence that the article we just created or the paragraph we just added is neutral, well cited, and unless we really missed some, some thing, uh, it is unlikely we will be reverted. It is unlikely my article will be challenged. Uh, that's how I and other experienced Wikimedians contribute, right? We have a fairly high confidence that our work will be accepted because we know the rules and are following them. And if every now and then the, it is challenged, we are able to show up and argue, discuss, 
Wikipedia is a discursive project. It's a conversation. And that itself is another um, observed weakness in sub-Saharan uh, African communities. When their edits are challenged, and sometimes they are unjustly challenged, most sub-Saharan African editors do not show up for the discussion. They do not show up. So someone asks a question like, where did you get this? Or is this reliable? Or how, how do, where, what is the source for this quotation? And then they don't show up on the talk page, and then it gets deleted per policy, as it should be. But this not showing up is itself a characteristic of the difficulty or the gap in, in capacity in many sub-Saharan African communities. And I stress this apropos of the plateauing early. People can be editing for three, four, five years and still never show up to the talk pages. When something gets challenged or deleted, they go, ah, well, well, you know, better luck next time. And they just try again, which means they also didn't learn anything from, from the, you know, they didn't learn anything from the fact it was deleted or challenged. Uh, and and this, this is a, a problematic dynamic. Um, another sobering statistic is that there are zero English Wikipedia admins in Sub-Saharan Africa. Not one. Zero. In all these years. Uh, a, very, a very shocking uh, statistic, in my opinion. Uh, but oh, maybe not so shocking, given everything I just said. Right? A lot of the editor base has this uh, uh, shallow or underdeveloped familiarity with the platform, and we know, those of us who have looked into what does it take to become an English Wikipedia admin, it requires a non-shallow understanding of policies and debates and, a, and a, a track record. You need to be seen to have participated in your share of deletion discussions and notability discussions in order to even be considered for the role. So maybe it is not that surprising. The, these facts are related. So we mentioned the materials are a problem. And the other thing we observed is about our own behavior as a funder and as an enabler uh, in Africa. Our uh, strategic eagerness to fund work in sub-Saharan Africa resulted in funding a lot of projects with low effectiveness just because we wanted some work to happen in certain regions, etc. And sometimes repeatedly funding ineffective work, uh, which I uh, say here on this stage is not great grant making on our part. Uh, and we shouldn't have done that, in my opinion. I think we should have, instead, instead of investing in whoever shows up, oh, okay, there's a new person from this country, we've never funded any work in this country, let's fund this person, period, just because they showed up and they're from this country. Instead of saying, hang on, who is this person? How much do they know? Can they lead effective work? Should we empower this particular person just because they're the first to even ask? Um, so we suggest, and this leads to our experiment, that we need to do better about uh, intentionality, about whom we resource and whom we support in order to increase the effectiveness of the work. Which leads us to our big idea, what we came back to Mariana with, how will we recruit 3,000 editors in five years? And we call it the big funnel approach. It is a term borrowed from, from business, from marketing, right? You create a big funnel. For those who don't know, a funnel is what you put on top of a bottle or something to pour liquid, right? Starts wide and then narrows down. Uh, I say this because I have discovered that this word is not always uh, familiar to uh, non-native speakers. Uh, and so uh, the, the idea is, sorry, I keep forgetting to move the slide. Um, the idea is we create something very open, anyone can join, anyone can uh, take the training, and then out the other end, out the narrow end of the funnel, a few people would come out, but those few will be well equipped to contribute, will be well equipped to further invest in. And this is a, a schematic of what it looks like. The text is far too small for you to read, we're going to zoom in, but broadly on the left, we are going to bring a whole lot of people into a self-paced online course, like a Coursera or edX course, right? Like an online uh, course with videos and subtitles and computer-graded exercises, etc. <clears throat> and only those people 
who, would have, who will display the self-motivation, the intrinsic motivation, not for t-shirts, not for data packages, not for the promise of a laptop, but because they actually want to learn how to edit or find it interesting, those who will come out the other end after the five, six, seven modules of the core policies, those are the people we should invest in. Those are the people we should give data packages to and invite to in-person meetings and give scholarships to Wikimania for and encourage to do outreach, et cetera, et cetera. Right? And those are the further steps of the funnel. The big innovation here is that this funnel, this online training, will have a certain cost to set up. But once set up, it is zero cost per capita, right? zero cost per person, which means we can drive into it masses of people, hundreds of thousands of people, using uh, site notices, using social media campaigns, using any, maybe radio ads, using whatever means at our disposal to drive as many potentially interested people to enter the training. We expect massive uh, um, I'm blacking out on the word. Um, well, like dropouts, but I was looking for the fancy word. Uh, churn is another term. Yes, thank you. Uh, attrition is the word I was looking for. Yes, thank you. Uh, massive attrition. Obviously, a lot of people will show up and go, yeah, sure, I'd like to learn how to edit Wikipedia. Oh, wait, this looks like work. Not for me. And that's fine. That's fine. Those are not the people we need, right? We need the people who are eager to do the work, who are interested in doing this. And the big question is, how many people will we have? What will be the conversion rate of this funnel, right? Will we be able to get, say, 1%? of the people who enter the funnel to actually complete the training on all the core policies. If we can get 1%, then to get 3,000 editors, we need to drive 300,000 people into this funnel. That's a lot of people, but there are a lot of people in Africa and that can be done. Again, it's an ambitious goal. And maybe 1% is something we can do. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's too ambitious. Maybe only 0.01% will, will make it through the funnel. And then, you know, maybe we need 30 million people through the funnel. That's already uh, questionable whether we can manage that. And in that case, you know, the model won't work. So a lot depends on this conversion rate. But the idea is that after we have those graduates, that's when we can, can really lavish the support and resources and, and integrate them with the movement, introduce them to channels, etc., etc. So we tested this. We have to skip a little. We tested this um, uh, approach by doing live training, not an online course. We had to prototype uh, much more modestly, and that's what we did after Singapore. Um, we tested this with four modules. These are the modules. Uh, a sort of general preparation module, a module showing 101 ways to contribute to Wikimedia, commons, Wikisource, recording pronunciations, all kinds of other things, and then two modules on core policies, neutral point of view and verifiability. And we taught those modules to existing sub-Saharan African editors, not newbies, existing editors uh, in the first uh, phase. And the results, I have to uh, be brief, the results are we had 150 people enrolled, about 80 people really went through the whole training and attended all the about 10 hours total of live lessons. Six months after the training's end, graduates were 38% less likely to be reverted. So their edit quality has significantly increased. And these are existing sub-Saharan African editors. These are people who have been around, have been editing and still being trained on the core content policies greatly improved their editing quality. This validates our hypothesis that this was missing, that this was needed, and that this training was to a degree effective. At the same time, there was a written assignment as part of the training where they were given paragraphs of non-neutral uh, text that they had to rewrite into neutral text to show that they can apply the principles of neutral point of view. Recognize weasel words and peacock phrases and all that. And only 37% of the uh, learners submitted what we uh, judge to be uh, uh, work that shows, yes, they got it. They, they rewrote it into largely neutral text. 
only 37%. More than half, despite attending the training and, and asking questions and having its, all the benefits of live instruction, <clears throat> still could not produce a coherent, neutral paragraph of encyclopedic text from a non-neutral one. I think that is an important finding that a lot of people don't want to look at too closely. But it, it speaks to a problem with language. People don't have enough English, enough sensitivity to, to uh, like what is promotional language, what to tone in order to recognize it. They get the principle, it shouldn't be promotional, they cannot execute it, they cannot actually apply it. Um, and, and people with that level uh, will have a hard time on English Wikipedia, will we'll have a hard time producing acceptable text. This to me reminds us that some people can't contribute. It's the encyclopedia anyone can edit, but it's the encyclopedia anyone can edit provided they're able to compose encyclopedic text. And not everyone is. That's a learning. Anyway, these are the results. The details are in the slides and you can uh, look at them. And the update I bring uh, today is that phase two will implement this uh, online course. Um, and we will finally get to test the big funnel part, like taking complete newbies and driving them through an online course and seeing how many of them um, are able to edit uh, properly um, after that so that we can start investing in them. And a call to action I have for you is to go to Meta. The link is here and I will be sharing these slides on the Telegram channel immediately. Go to this link where you can see already two of the module scripts uh, on Meta and I encourage you to review them, to edit them, to make them the best they can be, because if this is to be the, the main portal to learning how to edit English Wikipedia, it had better be uh, the best it can be. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I'm afraid we don't have time for questions uh, unless, is the next speaker ready? Yes. Yes, okay.